Hello everybody and welcome to this uh, summer reading watercolor workshop uh, on the theme of Oceans of Possibilities. My name is Susan Bartle and I'm a watercolor artist in South Central Kansas and I'm going to be helping out uh, with a little watercolor workshop on that theme. Um, today we're going to be looking at painting a seahorse and the in this process we're going to um we're going to um learn about wet into wet and wet on dry and how different ways to apply watercolor we're going to learn about painting with a limited palette and um we're going to learn about color mixing so it's going to be a really fun little project so I have a, um, a handout uh, that includes a drawing that looks something like this that then can be traced onto your uh, watercolor paper um, to, so that you can get an exact, um, you don't have to worry about the drawing part of this exercise. You can just, or you can just concentrate on the painting. Um, I transferred this using a piece of transfer paper, just like a paper that has graphite on one side. You put the graphite site down and you put this on top and then you trace around it with like a pen or something, something with a nice hard point on it. And um, then when you lift it up, you have this nice drawing there. Or you can, if you don't have that, you can um, just graphite over the back of the paper and then turn it over and that and then again trace it and that graphite should show up enough that you can kind of see the lines on there. Other products that we're going to be using, um, most importantly, is really good paper. This is uh, Arches uh, and you don't have to do a watercolor block like this, that's just what I'm working off of, but important that it be 140 pound and that it be a good quality, a good brand name paper, because this is going to require a lot of water on here. And if you don't have a good um, quality paper, it's gonna buckle the paper and it will pull the fibers and you won't have a good result in your painting. We're gonna be using three um, Windsor Newton paints today. And these are my three favorite. I have uh, settled on these after much trial and error. There's a permanent rose and Windsor yellow and Windsor blue green shade. And these are the three colors that we're going to use to make all the colors that we need for our painting today. Um, you might want to notice that this is not a red red and this is not a blue blue like we would think of in the say the American flag. This is a magenta color, and this is a turquoise or cyan color. And those are the colors used in four printers, in four color printers to get all the colors that you need also. Of course, we've got some clean water, and we've got our paper towel here. And we have a little um, thing here that we might use for cleaning up some messes afterwards. That's a magic eraser, like this and uh it it's really good for cleaning up little messes that we want to that we want to clean up after our painting is completely dry so to get started we're going to paint most of this wet into wet which is my favorite technique because it's so much fun oh i forgot to talk about the brush this brush is um a silver black velvet number four you don't have to have this brush but what is important about um a brush is that it holds a, a, a lot of water here and that it comes to a really good point here. Uh, that's so you can get into these little tiny edges right there and have good control over your, over your painting. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by just painting with clean water, no paint, uh, and we're going to, we're going to paint in this head area and You'll notice that some of the, like the little, what do I want to say, uh, head detail uh, here is 
is suggested by an area that doesn't get water. That's called negative painting. So you can kind of see that there's a little edge to this guy's head by this area that we're leaving unpainted. And that's, um, that's a fun little technique there. I'm also not going to paint over the eye. I'm going to go around the eye like so and continue on. So in watercolor, if you wanna, if you want white, you get white by not painting that area. So we want a white edge to the eyeball and we're gonna get that by not painting that, that eyeball. All right, and I'm carefully painting the little spines here. And there we go. All right, so it's time to activate our paints. And as you know, with watercolor, you can take them anywhere, dry like this, and then all you need to make them come alive is just add some water to them. So now we're adding some water we're going to start with red or magenta, permanent rose, getting quite a bit of, of um, water on there. By the way, my, my, the amount of water on my paper here is also quite wet. I don't know if you can see it, so I'm going to hold it up here so you can see how it looks. It's shiny, and when I turn it different directions, I can see that it's shiny. It's, uh, it needs to be wet like that so that the paint, when we put it on, will move throughout the area. You see how that it kind of explodes? Isn't that fun? And I'm going to be careful not to get it in our eyeball. No red eyeballs today. And move it out here. We'll get some more paint. And... Run it into there on his nose. He's got a red nose. Okay. All right, so we've got the whole area filled with red. Good job. Okay, now that we've done that, we're gonna get, we're gonna make, do a little color mixing here. First, I'm gonna clean out my brush. Oh, I didn't get myself a paper towel sheet here either. It's important for blotting sometimes. Keep that handy. Okay. Um, we're going to think about this in terms of light and shadow and we want to add some light to the top portion of our the sunlight we're going to pretend is coming from this direction so that's where we're going to put yellow which is the color of sunshine right so now we're going to activate our yellow paint you notice I cleaned out my brush really well because I don't want to get any red in my yellow paint and now I'm not going to really brush this on, I'm gonna drop it on. So I'm gonna to touch here, touch there, touch there, touch there, there, there. And then I'm gonna go back and clean my brush and get some more yellow. And I'm gonna drop it along that line. And I'm just dropping it in because it's a lot more fun to watch the colors mix and swirl around like you can see a little movement right there in that one. Um, if you don't brush it in, we just drop it in, just kind of poke it in there. So on the shadow side of this guy, we're gonna put some blue. So I clean my brush again and then go get some blue. And I'm going to drop it along his jawline here. I'm going to call it a jawline. I don't actually know if that's what you'd call it, but we'll pretend. And on the bottom side of his little snout, that's pretty dark. So I'm going to go 
go over here and use up some of that, put some over here. The blue is a dark color, so you gotta be kind of careful with it. A little goes a long way, and if you get too much, you can just go like that and take a little bit, well, I should, maybe you couldn't see that. Just dab it on your paper towel and take a little bit of the color out. And now I think I'm about right to go over here and not have it completely dominate that snout area. And just for fun, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do the outside bottom edge of his eye, just to give it kind of a little bit of a look of, of it indenting there around his eyeball, which it probably does. I don't know for sure, but. All right, now we're gonna just leave that alone and let the colors mix, they'll mix and and um, move until they're completely dry. So the next thing we're gonna we're gonna move down the painting, and we're going to do um, this because I'm right-handed. I'm gonna start with this left row of um, airy. I don't know what you call these uh, little. Um, a little design area here is what we'll call it, I guess. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna paint um, this one wet into wet again. So I first paint just with water, then I'm gonna paint blue over here. Okay, I don't need very much blue because like I said, blue is a pretty dark color. All right, I'm gonna clean out my brush. This time, I'm gonna put red on this side and the bottom. And I'm gonna put yellow on the lights. Whoops, I got a little drip that wanted to come down there. Get that off. I'm gonna let that mix. Okay. Now we can work our way down here and the fun thing about this is, um, so if I were doing this as a painting to present to somebody, I would probably do this same technique all the way along the spine, but because we're learning and having fun, we're gonna try some different things just to see what happens. So now I'm painting wet on dry and you'll notice it goes on a little bit um, a little bit darker. So wet on dry means that I have some wet paint in my brush, quite a bit of water and quite a bit of paint, but I didn't, wa I didn't put the water on first in this area. So that means I, it's gotten a little more concentrated. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on my addition of color. And also, this doesn't run quite as much because it's drier. Um, so I'm going to add some yellow over here. And again, I've got a little... All right, that looks pretty much the same, but this one actually looks lighter, you can see, than this one does. And that's because this one has more water in it and this one's more concentrated paint. All right, so I think this time... We'll again paint wet on dry. Another blue row here. Now, you know, this is your painting. So you can paint these little areas however you want and experiment however you want. Just don't mix your, your don't get your colors mixed up on your palette over here. Try and keep them clean. Try and um, clean your brush between everything you do. So this time, let's put some red on the bottom here. And put some yellow on the top. See how that looks. And we might wanna do one that's only got one um, color mixing thing going on. 
So how about we just put yellow in this one? And I want to show you a little trick after I do this. I'll put the yellow right there. Did you see how it moves things there? Watch what happens when I drop a little water into this side. Oops, I didn't really do much, did it? There. See how it pushes it away? So you can experiment with things like that. But try, what you want to avoid is doing a lot of brushwork in there because that will, um, that will just make muddier colors and it's not nearly as much fun as watching what the paint does all by itself. We're just dropping the paint in and then watching, kind of like a science experiment, and watching to see what happens when we, when we do that. This is another wet into wet one. You can see how much more watery that is. It's also gonna take longer to dry. This time I'm just gonna drop some red in. Woo, 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 look at that go. All right, I'm gonna see what that ends up looking like. All right, our middle row is gonna be our red row. So again, I'm gonna paint that first one uh, with just clean water and drop my red in. It's not really red, like I said, it's magenta or permanent rose is the actual name of the paint tube. The paints are a little bit expensive um, compared to like grocery store watercolors. But the thing of it is, if you paint with this method, you don't really uh, need to buy very much. You can get them in really small tubes and a little will last you forever. Well, not quite, but pretty close. So I'm dropping a little yellow in there. Clean my brush, I'm gonna drop some blue over here. Hello. All right, let's try some wet on dry. And you notice again, it's a little bit more intense, the color is, because there's not as much water. Let's do the same thing. I'm gonna drop in some blue. Ooh, look at it go. On that side, some yellow over here. Yowza. All right. Try another red one, wet on dry. Okay. And this time we'll try what we did over here and add our yellow up in this corner. Oof, there it goes. Racing around. And now put some blue down in here. Wowza. Wowza, wowza. All right, we'll see how that ends up looking. And we'll do another wet on dry. And some yellow up here in the corner, just yellow and see how that looks. And then we'll do another red one down here.
this nice point on this brush is allowing me to get some nice points on my little scaly things. I should have looked up before I did this what that's called. Or if they have a name, spiny something or other. All right, there we go. Woo, look at that go. All right, and guess what? Our last row of spiny thingies are gonna be yellow. So, point with clear water. Drop the yellow in. That is a pretty small shape right there. So I think on this one, I'm gonna try and just get a little, little point of red right there. Hopefully I don't have a drop coming off of there. There we go. Just a little point of red. See how it just kind of makes a little line going in down there? That's because I didn't get very much water on my brush. I tried to keep it kind of dry. And now I'm gonna put this in this corner. Yeah, that'll work. All right, clean my brush, do some wet on dry. All right, I'm gonna try something a little bit different on this one. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but that's the whole point, right? You could experiment a little bit. I'm gonna get just a little pretty concentrated tip of red on there, and I'm gonna try and not do it on the spines like I would normally. I'm gonna try and do it in the middle so that the spines stay in the sunlight, as it were. So I'm gonna kind of drop it in a row along the middle. That worked out pretty well. And then I'm gonna try and drop the blue right along the bottom here. Now that should be fun to see how that turns out. All right, another wet on dry. I'm not sure if you've been watching your painting as it dries, but you notice how things have been moving around and kind of blending together and making some awesome, miraculous colors in the process. Pretty fun. All right, this one we're gonna drop, I'm going to drop, you don't have to, right on the top. Blue in this bottom corner here. A little bit up the side. Okay, another wet on dry. Alrighty, and I'm gonna just put some red in the bottom corner. Leave it at that. Got all right, so there's a good example of paint getting contaminated. So I'm going to pull that out because I don't want it to affect this part of my yellow. You see how that turned orange there for me? And so when I make a mistake like that that I don't like, I can blot it out like that and kind of start over. It still leaves a little bit of yellow, you'll notice, but. So that was a good example of not cleaning my brush very well. And the yellow is by far, I'm sure that all of them get contaminated uh, to the same degree, but it's all, it's easier to, much easier to notice when it's the blue that gets contaminated. 
All right, put some blue. There we go. All right, so we got a pretty colorful looking little seahorse there. I'm gonna paint this fin. Wet on dry with yellow. And I'm gonna let it dry. And after it's more dry than it is, of course, right now, we're gonna put some little, some little um, bones or spines in there. Um, but right now we're just gonna paint this part yellow like that and let it dry for a bit. Okay, and this tail we're going to do, so we have a kind of a red-based head, a yellow-based fin, and we're going to have a blue-based tail. So we're going to do this one also, wet on dry. All right, so that first one, so if my sunshine is coming from over here, most of my light's gonna be right in here. So I'm gonna do this one with just red for a mixing color. Kind of goes with that one right there. All right, what am I gonna do with this next one? Hmm, let me think. I get to decide because it's my painting. It's my experiment. I think I'm going to add both colors on this one. So I'm going to put red here. Green, my, my, my water's getting quite murky, but I'm not going to take the time to I should have brought an extra one over here, but I didn't think about it. There, I'm gonna do like that. Okay, another wet on dry. And this one, I'm going to put just a little bit of red right there and maybe here. And then most of the color I'm going to add is going to be yellow on this side because, like I said, it's in the sun. Okay. This one I'm just going to add some yellow to. some yellow. I'm always thinking about where the sunlight's coming from and where there's shadow. And yellow was always the sunshine color. And blue is always the shadow color. But when you're using blue as your base color, then yellow is the sunshine color and red becomes the shadow color. And 
that as we know, whenever there's sunshine or light of some sort, there's shadows. And that's what makes paintings in her color interesting. All those different colors that happen when you get a little light on the subject. I'm gonna do just yellow on that one. Kind of got out of the line on that guy. Doesn't really matter though. It's all gonna be okay. All right, we're gonna put some, on this one, I'm gonna put some yellow here on this spine. And some red down in this. Ooh, it's so wet, I can't even see it. Here's another little trick. That one has a really big puddle of water. So if you use the corner of your paper towel and put it in there, see how it whipped up some of that excess water? That worked pretty well. Now, if I add some red, it'll actually show something. There we go, better. All right, I think these last three, I'm gonna make just plain blue. So if you're um, in a position to be the person buying watercolor materials, I would really like to encourage you to buy the best things you can for the money because you will not have a good watercolor experience if you don't have good materials. End of story. And so that's why especially good paper is important. And you'll get a much more vibrant painting if you use good paints. But good paints are not as important as good paper. All right, I'm going to make this guy's eye. And I'm going to leave a little highlight in there so it looks like he has a little light shining on his eye. See how I made that circle there? I'm not going to paint that circle because that's going to be our little light highlight this eyeball and always when you do the eye it's like hello seahorse how you doing all right we need to put the spines in here and so i'm going to put um i'm going to do it this way i'm going to do a little blue Like so, then clean my brush. This is more like drawing with paint is what we're doing right now. Dry on dry, more like where we don't have very much water in our paint. And I'm gonna try and make a little, that's still too much water. I want this to be pretty dry. All right, now I'm gonna make this really close to here so that it kind of looks like there's a top and a bottom side to this little spine. I'm worried that I'm pulling up some of that blue, so I'm gonna clean up my brush and start over. Get a bunch of the water out of there. Okay. So you see how that kind of makes it look like the spine has a top and a bottom side, those spine ribs, because the uh, the red is more more of the lighter color there. Than the... All right, and I think I want a bit of red right on the. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this guy kind of some little things like that. That looks kind of cool, don't you think? And then I'm gonna 
go all the way down here, like so. Cool. Well, I hope you like your seahorse. And um, at this point, I would let your seahorse dry and then let it dry completely. And then if there are certain areas that are, you're just not happy with, then you can come back and, um, and do what they call a glazing layer. So when it's completely dry, these paints are kind of like translucent. So if you think about them as a piece of stained glass, you can see through from one layer to the next layer and those it makes a real complex amount of color. Um, so you can do a glazing layer over something where you're just not happy with the way the color turned out. Um, or if the paint is dry, like let's say right in here, um, let's say I had a little mistake in there that I didn't like, I can get um, some painter's tape, or this is artist tape, but just some kind of tape that easily pulls up. And I can make a little area taped off. Let's say I wanted, uh, I didn't like this part right here. Let's say, uh, so I'm just gonna take out a little bit of that color there and I'm gonna tape it off so that it doesn't get into my white area there. And the trouble is this one's really wet right there. So I'm gonna do it over here and we'll just show you how you can take out a little bit of this. Now this should be done with clean water and I don't have clean water right here, but you tear off a little bit, a little bit of this uh, magic eraser. You dip it in the water, you squeeze out the extra water and then you carefully take out a little bit of your color and you can get it almost back to the color of the paper if you work on it enough. But don't try and be as uh, gentle as you can, but uh, you can take off the some of the paint like that and you can make a little highlight like that or you can just change the whole look of the painting um, by, by taking out paint as well as by adding paint. And so you can, you can add more paint layers. But the important thing is with watercolor is to let the paint do the work, let, let, it, let it do its thing. Enjoy watching it as you would a, a science experiment, like, ooh, look what's happening there. And look at, ooh, look at that color right there, the way that little thing. And it's always gonna be different because there will be different amounts of, of paint and different amounts of water and um, it's always even even how dry it is in the air affects how it ha how it all goes together so just enjoy it at this stage let it dry completely and then if you want to make some fixes on it then you can think about that after it's completely dry and you want to go back and and change it uh, some so um, i'm going to leave it like this for now i might do an additional um, little video for those of you who'd like to add some more details or see what it's like to glaze uh, after this is all over. But we're going to leave it like this for now. And thank you very much for participating in Oceans of Possibilities.